Hey folks, Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works. Today we're going to show you how to wrap up these uh, 10 frame swarm traps and we're going to show you how we set them up with the frames and the lures that we use. So let's get started. So we've got a few things we need to do to get these ready to go, you know, in a tree or, or some will be hung. I, I will hang some. If I don't have a tree stand where I want them to be, most of them will go in tree stands. Um, I'll, I'll put wh what I can in tree stands, and then ones that I don't have, like if there's a really nice location that I think I can catch bees, and I don't have a tree stand, I will put the, uh, I'll hang this from a tree using paracord or a small nylon rope, you know, whatever you can get a hold of. So, a few things we have to do. Um, one thing we need to attach this swarm trap bottom to our 10 frame box. I only put four to five frames in these swarm traps to give the trap uh, more volume. And that's something that the bees are looking for is a bigger volume. So you can see here, this is how we got the box set up. Um, and so we need to put, we'll put nails on these corners to hold these frames in place. So I'm going to show you how I secure those. Um, we'll put the nails or the screws in the side to hold these two pieces together. And then I'll show you how I set these up, or how I put my lure in them. I've also put a ratchet strap around this to keep the lid on. And that allows me to strap it down to the tree stand that I'm putting them in. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, and you, you can see that I've already drilled a hole on this side. So... I've got a countersink, it's just a small uh, countersink, it's got a drill bit that gives you a pilot hole, and then um, uh, this end here is tapered, and that'll cut just a little, a little pocket in there for your screw to set flush in there. Not necessary, but it keeps things from splitting, and it's handy, you know, if you, if you have one or can get one. You can find them about any hardware store, um, big or small. So I'm just going to go to the center here. And I'm just going to go in deep enough that my screw will sit right inside there. Same thing here. There we go. And that just that goes through the this and gives me a small hole in here, so I don't split my box when I screw that to it. And then I've got some number six by five eight screws, just long enough to uh, to catch the box. I don't want to put a big hole in the box. I really don't like putting the hole in there at all because you know I'm going to use this box in my operation, and it's a potential place for rot. But you can always cover that hole back up with a little bit of paint, which I probably won't do. We we'll just put one screw in each tab. That'll hold everything together. Like I said, I like these to be, you know, just as simple and easy as they can be to transport and put up and take down, take apart. You know, I just want everything streamlined. Uh, I don't have a lot of extra time with the, a full-time job and managing the, the bees that I have, and so um, this is uh, the quickest way that I know to do it. <clears throat> I'm sure there's better ways out here, out there, but this is what I've got. So let's talk about our setup inside the box. Like I said, we've got four frames in here. We've got three undrawn foundations. These are Acorn plastic foundations. Um, not sponsored by them in any way, but this is just what I like to use. They're quick and easy. Um, some people say the bees don't really like them, and they may not like them as well as a wax foundation but they like them well enough. If, if, they're, if they want to draw a comb, they'll draw them. Um, so I got three undrawn foundations. The reason for that is swarms uh, come ready to build. They, they take in a lot of honey and nutrition before they leave the, high, the, the parent colony, the colony they split off of, and they are just ready to make wax. They, if, if you catch a swarm, a lot of times you'll see them. They'll just have 
uh, wax scales, you know, off their abdomen where their uh, wax production glands are. They'll just be little tabs, little tabs of wax hanging there, and they're ready to do something with that. So I give them some un undrawn foundation because that's the good part about swarms. They they build out foundation really nice and really quick, and that's it's just another way to get some good foundation. It's uh, you you know you want that queen to have a place to lay. Um, so I do put in one dark brood comb. Um, you really don't want any nutrition on this. I got a little bitty patch of honey here, but um, pretty much a dry comb. So dry, dark comb. Uh, if you leave any food in there, um, the bees that you are seeing could be robbing. And then you have issues with uh, wax moth and small high beetle, things like that can slime or uh, destroy the comb in your trap. So like I said, and you know, this, the, of course this comb has been in the hive, so I've got propolis on here, wax, um, you know, I've got this old dark comb, it's got that brood smell, that's very important. This is probably the number one attractant. There's a lot of stuff, and you'll see that I use lemongrass oil, swarm commander, um, I use it all. But this right here is probably all you need. If you didn't have, if I didn't have anything else, I would want this. So I, I just center that up in there, and then I'll put a nail on each corner. Um, I really went back and forth whether to put four or five in here. Five would have probably been better, but. Um, that's just what I decided to go with. I really intended on um, filling this box with foundation. I was going to put one dark comb and fill all 10 frames with foundation. That was going to cut way down on the amount of time um, that I could go between checking these swarm traps. Because with four frames, um, they could fill this up just in a matter of days. So I had really decided to fill this thing full of frames and just let it go but I still had to worry about this bottom down here um, and I believe this is very important I believe both both is important both the empty space up here and this extra room down here it adds more volume and it gives this box gives a place for the bees to come in they like to come in um, easily hang off the bottom of the frames and then move in so this gives them a place to move in hang and then move up the frames so um, also this hole like I mentioned before the hole size is also very important before um, I've got two other uh, videos I've got one video that I made last year that goes over it's, it's a very detailed video on swarm trapping different style boxes different lures different ways to put lure out um, I'll put that in the description and then I've also got a video from just a couple weeks ago where I made these uh, swarm trap bottoms so I'll link both of those videos in the description so I've got these four frames I want to put a small nail on each side of the frame each corner to hold these in place so these are 16 gauge by uh, one inch uh, nails like a little um, you know rib nail And I'm just going to put these tight against the frame and just hammer them down flush where my lid will shut. And like I said, all this does is hold these frames in place while I'm getting in and out of the tree or while they're in the truck these things will fall everywhere and then you'll have a mess so for lures I use both lemongrass oil and swarm commander uh, you can't really read these because they're from last year and this stuff gets spilled on itself and um, the lemongrass oil um, is uh, you know it'll, it'll eat up plastic or whatever um, make everything sticky but the way I use the lemongrass oil is I take a pipette these are just a little pipette 
that you can get on Amazon or just about anywhere. There's a little pipette. Um, it's a three millimeter pipette that uh, you would use in like a scientific experiment or lab for high school or college. And I will draw up about a half a mil. About a half to three quarters mil of a mil. And then I let that run down. I will fold that over. And I'll put a thumbtack like you'd use in a bulletin board. It's any type of thumbtack that you have. I'll put that through the top. And that holds it shut. And so then I pin this in the opposite corner of my entrance. And I don't really know why. I feel I'd, That's just how I've done it. And it, it seems to work. I can't really explain why I do the opposite corner. But what's great about this, the lemon grass oil will permeate the uh, pipette. And it does like a slow release. So it's not too strong. And it will stay in there for, you know, a few weeks. I know some guys put this in and never change it. But I would say if you didn't have any activity in two or three weeks you probably need to change it but if you hadn't had that much activity before then you probably need to move the swarm trap so then I would pin this in the back just like that and then so my frames are secured I've got my lemongrass oil in put my lid on top so then I'll take a ratchet strap and I'll wrap it around the box. I get these ratchet straps from Harbor Freight. Uh, they're just a cheap ratchet strap and they work well. So what I like to do is I like these things to be long enough to go around the box twice. So like I said, I like them to go over, be long enough to wrap around twice, because when I put it in the tree, I'll set it in the tree stand, I'll hook this in uh, to the tree stand, this in to the tree stand, and tighten it down. It ho helps hold the lid on, and it helps, uh, it keeps the critters or the wind from blowing it out of the stand. And the reason I'd like to double wrap it is because when you're done, or when, when you've caught a swarm, you just unhook each end, hook these ends together and you can ratchet it tight so you may have to adjust the strap slightly but it's not that you know it's not real difficult just adjust that strap slightly I like to get my ratchet on the top close to the top like that and then I can tie this loose in through here and that gives me a handle to carry the trap with and so I can lift it in and out of the tree and it makes it a little easier to get them out or you can hook up if you don't want to carry them up and down the ladder which is probably not the safest thing to do you can hook a rope here and once you get in the tree stand you can hoist them up so that's the way I like to uh, set them up and then once I get them in a tree I take the swarm commander put a little little dab here in the entrance and that's how I use that and then I'll refresh that you know every once in a while when I swing by and check on them really I like the spray swarm commander better this probably stays with the trap longer but it's a little more difficult to use um, the spray when you're in a tree and just reach up there give it a shot this here you've got a just a little more cumbersome to put this on whenever you're hanging from a tree so I do like uh, the uh, spray better but the gel may it probably functions a little better it's just not as convenient so that's our swarm trap right there we'll do another video uh, in a few days and showing you how to put these things out it's March 12th and I really would have liked to already had these out I like to have them out, you know, that first week of March, but about the time that I wanted to put them out, we had another cold snap. It's like 31 degrees out today. It's going to warm up next week. So I'm going to get these put out over the next two or three days, 
and I should, you know, be ahead of the swarms. You just have to watch the weather. It's going to be different every year. Um, you know, if the weather would have continued like it uh, had the first week of March, I, you know, would have one of my swarm traps in uh, the first week of March. But we got this cold break, cold snap the second week of March, and that, um, you know, slowed everything back down. And, um, you know, so I, I'm going to get these things out next week, and I should be in pretty good shape. Shouldn't miss many swarms, but uh, that's for Middle Tennessee. You need to figure out where you're at. Um, of course, you're north of us. You're going to be behind us. South of us, you're going to be in front of us. So just figure out where you're at. Figure out when your swarm season is. Um, the earlier swarms are usually larger. You're not very likely to catch a swarm the 1st of March, but those are usually pretty good-sized swarms. So it's nice to catch those and um, gives you a chance for any equipment to air out and lose any. Like I've got some fresh paint here, and I used... Uh, uh, moth crystals on my frames so I get some time for everything to air out um, to get the bees ready to use it so like I said we're gonna put out another video shortly on swarm trap placement so watch for that uh, we appreciate you uh, watching our videos if you like what you see hit that like button subscribe to our channel and help us share our videos we're just trying to help everybody be the best beekeeper they can be thanks for watching